The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul, and he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And then here's what we're going to get to this morning. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? David said, Thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I pray, God, today that you'd touch us as we look into the Word of God, and I pray that you would speak to our hearts as only you can. And I pray, God, that your Word would become real and refreshing to our hearts and our lives today. And I pray that you'd help us and do for us that which we cannot do for ourselves. And we'll be careful to give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise for what you're going to do here today in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right, you can be seated. Psalm chapter number 23 and verse number 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And we talked about the word want. The Bible says that the belly of the wicked shall always want. But David said, I shall not want. That word want means to be in lack of or to be in need of, to be without and diminished. And David said, because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in need. I shall not lack. I shall not be without. And I've said this before and I'll say it again, that when Jesus is all you have, Jesus is all you need. Amen. He's Lord and he's king and he's everything in between. And we talked about how David said that he's mine. He's the good shepherd. He's the chief shepherd. He's the great shepherd. But David said it's more personal than that. He said, for the Lord is my shepherd. There was a little girl. They asked her to quote the 23rd, 23rd Psalm. And she quoted it like this. She said, the Lord is my shepherd. And that's all I want. They said she got it wrong, but the preacher got up behind the little girl and said, No, she actually got it right. Amen. For the Lord is my shepherd, and that's all I want. Amen. So what was David saying in Psalm 23? And I, I said, Let's look at it in a different light. In the light of some things that I do not want. And we always talk about the things we want. Amen. We always let people know our wants. We let them know our needs. But David said, there's some things that I do not want. There's some things I shall not want. And I got to thinking about this this week as I was digging more into Psalm 23 and looking at these verses of Scripture. Everything that David makes mention of is the things that the world tries to offer an individual, that tries to offer a person. And it's the things that the world offers that God has already met those needs. You don't need the world to offer it. You don't need to try to figure it out. Amen. Let God be God. Amen. And let God be true and every man a liar is what the Bible said. And so we, we talked a little bit two weeks ago where David said, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. So what's David saying? David is saying the, the, the first thing that I don't need, that I shall not want, is rest and relaxation. The world will tell you, you need to take time off. You need to have a vacation. You need to rest. But if you're a Christian and the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not need rest because he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. John 14, 27, Jesus said, peace I leave unto you, peace that I give unto you, not as the world give. Thank the Lord for that. Amen. It's only temporary what the world gives. It's only a temporary peace. He said, but I give unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. It's a peace that passeth all understanding. I don't know if any better rest than that yeah. is knowing the true peace of God. Listen, the Bible says in John chapter number 6, verse number 10, that when Jesus fed the 5,000, he made them to sit down in much grass. He maketh me lie down in green pasture. He fulfilled that in John chapter number 6. David wrote it in Psalm 23. It was fulfilled in John chapter number 6. They were made to sit down in much grass. And by the way, there's nothing any more comfortable than much grass. Amen. Amen. 
He didn't take them up on a rocky hillside to feed the 5,000. He didn't take them down to the desert, out into the sand and the cactuses to make them be fed there. What did the Bible said? He took them out into a pasture and where there was, John said, much grass. And if I'm not mistaken, Kyla Rowland wrote the song, Thank God for the Fields of Grace. Amen. And I'm glad he does take us to those fields of of grace. So what's David saying? The Lord's my shepherd. I shall not want rest because he makes me to lie down in green pastures. Watch this. He leadeth me beside the still waters. What's David saying? He's saying I shall not want rest and relaxation and I shall not want refreshment. Amen. The world's got their refreshments. The world has plenty of refreshments. But David said, he maketh me lie down. That's where I get my rest. And he leadeth me beside the still waters. That's my refreshment. Proverbs 25, 25 says, As cold waters are to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. Now I'm telling you, there's nothing any better than that sweet, small, still voice where we can get refreshment. You remember the story in John 4, the woman at the well? She showed up coming to get a drink. What would she leave with? The whole well. Amen? She left her pail, but she got the well. Don't ever forget that. You show up, he'll fill you up. Amen? He is refreshing. Watch this. He said, I shall not want because he maketh me lie down. For I shall not need refreshment because he leadeth me beside the still waters. Now look at verse number three. Y'all there? He says, he restoreth my soul. David said, there's no need for me to have restoration. Amen. And by the way, the world has their restoration. The world will offer you their restoration. But David said, for the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want these things. I shall not want rest. I shall not want refreshment. And I shall not want restoration. He restoreth my soul. He repairs my soul. He recovers my soul. I mean, because he lives, amen, we have peace with God. Isaiah chapter number 53, verse number 6 says, We like sheep have gone astray. And listen, we're guilty, everyone, of turning aside and going our own ways and messing up. But God, who is rich in mercy, he shows us our wrongs. He shows us our errors. He gives us repentance. He brings us back. He restoreth our soul. He's our remedy. He's our redemption. He's our recovery. He is our life, and he's everything in between. David said, I shall not want because I've got a shepherd. I shall not want because Jesus is meeting my needs. Amen. Has he met your needs this morning? Is he meeting your needs today? David said, when I'm exhausted, when I'm wearied, when I'm troubled, when I'm backslidden, when I'm anxious, he brings back the victory. He brings back the vigor. He brings back my vitality. David said, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. What is the things that David shall not want? He shall not want rest. Amen. He shall not want refreshment. He leads me by the still waters. David said, hey, he, I shall not want restoration, for he restoreth my soul. But I want to go a little bit further this morning, and we'll dig right into these verses of Scripture. You hang with me. But watch what he said in verse number 3. He, the Bible said, he restoreth my soul, and he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness, for his name's sake. So here it is this morning. I want you to write this down somewhere in the margin of your Bible. David said, for I shall not want the Lord's my shepherd. Amen. I shall not want rest. I shall not want refreshment. I shall not want restoration. But I'm going to tell you something else I don't need in my life, and that's redirection. I don't need redirection. I do not need somebody to try to redirect my life. Now, David, how can you get to the place where you can say, I don't need any kind of redirection. I don't need any redirecting in my life. Because David said, he's the one that's leading me. So if I'm in the position I'm in, and I have done everything that God's told me to do, to pray and seek his face and trust him and lean not into my own understandings, then God's got me exactly where he wants me. Listen, every time Job saw one of his friends, they said, what did you do wrong? 
How did you sin? What in the world did you and your wife do to go through such miserable? And listen, Job, this is what he told his best friends. He said, miserable comforters are ye all. How many's got a friend like that? Amen. Miserable comforters are ye all. I'm going to be honest with you. I've got some of those friends. Miserable comforters are ye all. And see, listen, the reason we are where we are, the reason we're going where we're going, the reason we're doing what we're doing is because he leadeth me. There's no need for redirection. There's no need for redirecting my life. I'm exactly where God wants me to be. But what's the world want you to do? The world wants you to turn over a new leaf. Amen? The world wants you to redirect your life and to, and to make a recommitment. But you know what? None of that stuff works. It never has. None of that's never worked. How many's ever got at the beginning of the year and you said, man, I'm going to make a commitment this year. I'm going to lose 50 pounds. I said that when I hit 160. Amen? And then I said it again when I hit 200. And then when I hit 225, I said, I'm going to say it again. I'm going to praise God this year's the year. Amen? commitment. But I'm going to tell you something. Every time we try to do something on our own, what happens? We fail, we fall, and we fumble. But what happens when we take our hands off the reins? What happens, what happens when we let go of the will? Amen? What happens when we say, okay, he's not my co-pilot, he's my pilot. Matter of fact, I don't even need to be in the cockpit. Best place for me to be is in the back of the airplane. Amen. Just find me a, hey, I, I'll sit in the very tail end of the aircraft where it's bumpiest. As long as Jesus is on the boat, honey, she's going to float. Amen. It don't matter if he's in the hinder part of the ship and there's a storm coming and he's asleep. He's in control. He's always been in control. And David had gotten to a place in his life where he said, I don't need rest. I don't need refreshment. I don't even need restoration. And right now in my life, I don't need redirection. For the Lord leadeth me. Where does he lead? He leads in paths of righteousness. God leads us in the right path. I'm going to be honest with you. I've led myself down some wrong paths before. And I've led myself down some bad paths and some upsetting paths and, and some thick paths. But I'm going to be honest with you. Every time he's led me, every time he's guided me, it was right and it was just. One, one commentator said this. He said, the paths in which he, the shepherd, leads his sheep are plain paths. I'm glad for that, amen. I'm glad God leads us in some plain paths. It's easy to understand. It's easy to follow. The will of God is not something that's a pin the tail on the donkey, amen. It's as crystal clear, and you know exactly where God wants you to go in your life. You just got to hang in there and let God do his thing, amen. It's plain paths. It's straight paths. I'll say this. The paths that he leads us in are safe paths. Why? Because we are his sheep. And he's going to take care of his sheep. David said a lion came after the sheep. He said, you know what I did to the lion? He said, I grabbed him by his beard and I smote him with my bare hands. He said, a bear came after the, after the sheep. What did he do? He caught the bear and he slewed the bear. Nobody's going to mess with his sheep, amen? If you're his sheep and you're in his pasture, you're in a good place. And he's going to lead you. He's going to direct your life. He's going to guide you. He's going to be the government of your life, the governor of your life, amen? The only governor I hate, to be honest with you, is really not of the state of Georgia. It's that little device in my truck that only allows it to go so far. Amen. One of these days, I was, we're going to take that thing off. I mean, I hate that governor, but be honest with you. Nobody wants to be governed. Nobody wants to be saying, okay, this is as far as you can go. This is all you can do. You know what God does? Hey, he comes in, he moves in your life, and when he moves in, you say, please govern me. Please guide me. Please direct me. God, speak to me through your... And listen, that's what God does. He leads us. He leads us. He guides us in these safe, plain, straight paths. And these paths, listen, we can't walk in these paths, in these righteous paths, in these just paths. We can't walk in a peaceful path unless God leads us on them and through them. Believe me on that one. 
You can lead yourself down your peaceful path. It ain't going to be as peace, peaceful as his. You can go down your pleasant path. It won't be as pleasant as his. Hey, you have a perfect path and a perfect will for your life, but it won't be as perfect as his perfect will. Say amen right there. Hey, listen, his path is productive and it produces things. I'm telling you this morning that when God leads us, he leads us and he guides us exactly where he wants us to go. But what happens when we're on these paths? What happens when we're being led through these ways? He said he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. What's the flesh want to do? He don't want what's righteous. The flesh don't want what's right. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of times, and I'm guilty of this more than anybody here, okay? I'm more guilty of this than anybody, and it's the sin of unbelief. Not trusting and believing God. The sin of unbelief. Distrusting him on this path. Being discontent in the shepherd. And I'm going to tell you something. When you get to that place of unbelief and you start distrusting him and you're discontent with the shepherd, I'm going to tell you what it leads to. It leads to an unsteady walk. It leads to a wobbly walk. It leads to a fickle walk. And I met some of those people. Man, they can't hardly stand up on their own. James 1.8 says this, that a double-minded man is unstable in in all his ways. Listen, he's leading me. And you say, how does he lead me? How does he guide me? Well, he does it by his word. He directs us through his word to the right ways of truth and holiness. What Psalm 119 verse 105 say? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and it is a light unto my path. The word of God is what directs us. But it's the spirit of God that enables us to choose the right paths. Amen? You're not alone. He lives within my heart. John chapter number 16 and verse number 13. The Bible said that the spirit of truth will guide you unto all truth. Amen? Listen, I'm being sensitive this morning to the Spirit of God. I'm being sensitive to the Word of God. And I have to say that He leadeth me beside the still waters. He knows when I need rest. He knows when I need refreshment. He knows when I need rest. He leads me through the green pastures. But I'm going to be honest with you. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. I don't need redirection if I'm letting Him lead me and guide me in this walk. No matter how bad it gets. Let me say something else. He does not permit me to wander in ways that would lead to ruin. I didn't say ruin, by the way. I don't, don't get upset with me there, fellas. But I said ruin, not ruin, okay? He's leading me in the paths that won't ruin me. God's not going to do that. That's not, that. that's not the goal of the Lord is to lead you down the path of ruin. What is, what is, what is that? Who, who does that? That's Satan. He's the author of confusion. Psalm chapter number one, or Psalm chapter one, verses one through three, blessed is the man, happy is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in what? The law of the Lord. And in his law, he doth meditate day and night. And he shall be like a what? Tree planted by the rivers of water. And his, his leaf will not wither. And whatever he doth will prosper. That's Psalm chapter number one. How can that be possible? Because he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. Can I ask you a question this morning? Who's leading you? Who's guiding you? Amen? Can you honestly say beyond a shadow of a doubt, I shall not want redirection because he's in control and you're not in control? And by the way, listen how he does it. He's leading us in the paths of righteousness. David said for his name's sake. Think about that. You think he's going to lead you down a path of ruin and give himself a bad name? No. No. He's not, that, that's not his business. For his namesake. You know what David's saying? He's saying, listen, God is leading me down the paths of righteousness, not for any merit that I can get, but for the demonstration and for the glory of his mercy and his faithfulness and his goodness. David said it's for his name's sake. Amen. His name is honored. His name is glorified in my life. And the paths that I take, the paths that I walk, is doing one thing, and it's bringing honor and glory unto God. Ye are the light of the world. Why? Because we're following in his footsteps. We are the salt of the earth because we're following in his footsteps. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Have you been shining lately? Amen. 
Ephesians 2.10, the Bible said, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Amen. Not bad works, good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Think about that. The path has already been ordained. The paths of righteousness have already been laid. That's why I believe it was Jeremiah that said, Seek ye out the old paths. Amen. Find the old paths where you'll find rest for your soul. Stop looking for a new path. It's old paths. Amen. The old paths. Ask for the old paths for when you do you'll find rest for your souls. If it's new it's not true and if it's true it's not new. Psalm chapter number 37, verse number 23, Bible says this, The steps of a good man are ordered. I'd like a number one, please. <laughs> Let me get a number three with extra pickles. That, uh, that's, that's, that's ordered, right? How, what, what, what David said, The steps of a good man, they've been ordered. By, they've been provided. They've been prepared. They are set up. They are fixed. And they are established. One of the greatest messages that I'd ever heard preached, and it was a short, simple message, but it stuck in my heart, and I've never forgotten it, was where will the steps of a good man lead you to? And the old-time preacher said, number one, it'll lead you to Calvary. <laughs> man, he preached for about an hour and a half on leading you to Calvary. The steps of a good man, number two, where will it lead you? To church. Amen. It'll lead you to church. Thank God for the steeple. Thank God for the baptistry. Thank God for the people of God and the building and thank God for the church thank God for those amen who are looking for his appearing the steps of a good man will lead you to church steps of a bad man will lead you out of church amen right. the steps of a good man will lead you to a city and honey that's where we're all headed praise God to a city that's fairer than day he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's hey I said for his name's sake not mine not yours but he's leading me in these paths for his name's sake I shall not want redirection. I'm not interested in that this morning. I'm not interested in any type of redirection. I'm right where God wants me to be. Sometimes it's rough. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it's pleasant. Sometimes it's through the valley. Sometimes it's through the fire. Thank God, but it's all through the blood. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love that old song too. Hey, I shall not want rest. He, he what maketh me lie down? What is it? He, I shall not want refreshment because he, he's leading me by the still white. Get a drink when I need one. I'm, I'm following him. He's not going to let me get thirsty. Amen. I don't need restoration. He, he restoreth my soul. I don't need redirection because he leads me in the paths of righteousness. And I'm on the right path. I don't know about y'all, but I'm on the right path. How do you know it? Because he's leading me. But you know what David said? David said, for I shall not want for any relationship, because the Lord is my shepherd. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Watch this. For thou art with me. Listen to me this morning. Everything the world says we need. God has prepared it for us in Psalm chapter 23. Oh, you got to have a relationship with this person. You got to have a relationship with this company. You got to have a relationship with this with this banker. You got to have a relationship with this girl. You got to have a relationship with this guy. You got to have a relationship with this Hey, look up in here. You don't need any relationship except for one. And then all the other relationships will fall in place. I believe that with all of my heart. Amen? I believe that with all of my heart. When he's all you have, he's all you need. The Lord is my shepherd. And what did that little girl say? That's all I want. By the way, you couldn't have any kind of relationship until he is your relationship. I think about that. I said, you can't have, you know, I never really truly had a relationship with my mom and dad. I know they were my mom and dad, and they were my blood relatives. But I'm going to be honest with you, things changed when I got born again. I had a different relationship than I had before. I had a different relationship with my papa. 
Amen. I had a different relationship with Mama. I had a different relationship with my brother, with my sister. Hey, with my aunts and uncles and cousins and nieces and nephews. Why? Because there's something different when you're related to him. And ye are his children. The Bible says in John chapter number 1, In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And the Bible says to many of them that received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Amen? We've got a relationship, and it's Jesus Christ. David said something for the first time in Psalm 23. He's not said this whole time. David said, Thou art with me. He's not talking to you anymore. He's not talking to me anymore. He's talking to God. Notice, he said, The Lord is my shepherd. He maketh me lie down. He said, the Lord's my shepherd. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He said, the Lord's my shepherd. He restoreth my soul. He said, the Lord's my shepherd. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. But you get to verse number four, something happens. David stops talking to me. David stops talking to you. And David turns his direction to somebody else, a man that he knew on a personal relationship. He said this. He said, they, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, not because he's with me. What did he say? For thou art with me. I don't know if I can make it any clearer. That's a relationship. Yeah, man. Amen. That's a, it, it'd be one thing for me to come to church and tell you I'm married and tell you that I've got a wife and tell you what her name is. And then and 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 talk about where where we met and how we got married and 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 just talk about her. But it'd be it, it's different when she walks in the door and I say, "Hey, honey," and y'all still standing around. And I walk over and give her a hug. I said, "How how was the week? Did you have fun, man? I missed you. Give her a big old hug. How's the kids? You wait, wait a minute. All of a sudden, I don't have to tell you that's my wife. I don't have to tell you we're related because you're watching the reaction between me and her, and you're seeing the love she has for me and the love that I have for her. And you're saying, wait a minute, that's a relationship. That's what David's done got himself into in this passage of scripture. I feel like preaching all of a sudden. David done got himself into a place where he is a brat." bragging about God and he's talking about the shepherd and he's bragging about Jesus and he got slapped down in the middle of the valley of the shadow of death and he said I don't care if anybody else is listening I don't care if anybody else is reading thou art with me hallelujah he's talking to God he ain't talking to you I don't know about you but have you ever gotten to a place where you quit talking about God and you just started talking to God I'm telling you that. I've been praise God. There's been times. Man, I've been going down the road. It's been hard, and I've had some tough days, and I knew I couldn't pick up the phone call and call anybody else, but I picked up that spiritual phone, and I dialed Jeremiah 333, where it says, Call unto me, and I'll answer thee and show you mighty things which thou knowest not. And I went down the road, and I didn't have a Bluetooth in, and my phone was turned off. Off, uh, up, but somebody pulled up next to my old truck and said, Lord, God, he's in there talking to himself. No, I'm not. I, I'm talking to somebody bigger than me. Uh, I'm somebody bigger than you. Uh, he crawled up in the truck, uh, and as I tell him how much I loved him, uh, how much I appreciated him, uh, how good he's been to me of a family, and I said, thank you, Lord, uh, for your blessings on me. Uh, I'm glad uh, I've got a shepherd, and he's mine. Oh, yes, he's mine. Woo, thank you, Lord. Thou art with me. Man, that's a relationship. Who's your shepherd this morning? Who's your relationship with? Is it the Lord? Uh, David said, I'll tell you who it is. David said, let me tell you who I'm related to. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my love. The Lord is my light. Amen. The Lord is my salvation. The Lord is my rock. The Lord is my fortress. 
The Lord is my deliverer. I'm just picking up some words that I found in the book of Psalms. David said, for the Lord is my high tower. The Lord is my shield. The Lord is my buckler. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my savior. And the Lord is my stronghold. The Lord is my helper. And the Lord is my teacher. The Lord is my truth. And the Lord is my bread. Praise God, if he's the bread, he's got to be the butter too. Say amen right there. Uh, he's the supplier. For the Lord is my storehouse. The Lord is my song. The Lord is my shout. The Lord is my redeemer. And the Lord is my redemption. Who is he to you this morning? David said, thou art with me. He's my altar. The Lord is my armor. The Lord is my assurance. The Lord is my comfort. The Lord is my counselor. David said in Psalm 23, the Lord is my cup. The Lord is my drink. And the Lord is my saucer. Praise God. My cup's overflowing. David said he's my eyes. And yet he's my ears. David said he's my hands. But yet he's my feet. He is the Lord. He is the king. He is God. And he's everything. The Lord is my shepherd. And I shall not want. If you want this morning, you ain't met the same shepherd I've met. If you could take what I got and bottle it up, and we could put a cork in it, praise God, we'd put Budweiser out of business. Amen? It's joy unspeakable and full of glory this morning. No wonder David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Somebody's walking with him. <laughs> He's not walking alone, guys. Watch what he said. David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. David said, I ain't camping out in the valley of the shadow of death. David said, I'm not staying in the valley of the shadow of death. What did he say? David said, I'm not stopping and I'm not staying. I'm going through. I'm going to tell you something about God's people. They can go through hell or high water. They, I'm going to be honest with you. They'll come out somewhere on the other side every, just about every time. Right. Amen. Because they walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Amen. Hey, by the way, watch what David said. He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Why is that? He, he, look how he refers to death. Does anybody notice that? He says the shadow of death. There's something good about a shadow this morning. Now, don't you can't tell a two-year-old this. You can't tell a you can't tell a three-year-old this. Maybe I don't even know if a four-year-old could comprehend this. But but some of you in here probably gonna comprehend what I'm about to tell you. A shadow can't hurt you. Right. <laughs> Amen. A shadow can't harm you, and a shadow can't handle you. And I know a lot of people scared of shadows. <laughs> David said, Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, for thou art with me. You know how I know he's with him? Because unless there's some kind of light coming from somewhere, that shadow wouldn't even exist. Did y'all get what I just said? You might want to take a lap. Yep. Amen. I said, unless there's some kind of light coming from somewhere, that shadow wouldn't even exist. I'm going to be honest with you. When I read, oh, the valley of the shadow of death, it makes you say, well, oh, it must have been a dark, gloomy time. No, 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 no. It could have been a bright time. Because the only way you can have a shadow is if you got some light somewhere. Because without the light, there is no shadow. I'm gonna ask, let me ask you a question this morning. Who do you think's in control? Amen. Who is it in your life that's got all power? I tell you who it is. God said, for I am light. And in me is no darkness, no variable turning. I'm telling you this morning, God is my light. And then, look, I'm not afraid. Why? Because it's just a shadow. That's ah, just a shadow. I know the kids sometimes they get real scared laying in bed and they'll accidentally hang up a, instead of putting their jacket in the closet, they'll throw it up on the door and we'll turn the lights out in the bedroom and those little night lights will come on and all of a sudden it'll, it'll get the silhouette of that 
of that jacket and it'll, it'll project it onto the wall and it'll look like a T-Rex that's tearing up a trigonodon, triceratop, and, there, and there's blood going everywhere and, and there's eyeballs and guts and, and I'll, Daddy! Daddy! Oh, oh God, come in the room! And somebody's here! And I'll grab an AR-15 and a shotgun and a 380 and a 9 millimeter. I'm ready to go caveman on somebody. And I'll walk in there and I'll flip a light on and they'll say, where'd he go? Where'd he go? I said, who? Turn the light back off and you'll see the booger man. Turn the light back off and I said, oh, it's just a shadow. And they're going, Daddy, please do something about it. Put your jacket up next time, kids. Watch. I'm going to hang the jacket up, shut the door. What happens? Booger man's gone. He didn't exist when I flipped the light on. I'm glad we're going to a land. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, the booger man ain't going, praise God, because he is the light. He is the sun. We're not going where, hey, we're, we're going where the love light deep, amen. We're going to a land that's fair and day. We're going to a land where the sun will always shine, praise God. And there will be no shadows when we get to the other side. Uh, what was David saying in Psalm 23? He was saying, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, I shall not want refreshment. Uh, I shall not need rest. Uh, I shall not need restoration, and I shall not need redirection. For the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk. And when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not going to fear any evil, because I have no need for any kind of relationship. Thou art with me. Can I ask you this more? Is he with you? Is he walking beside you? Do you have the light? then what you're scared of, what you're afraid of, if Jesus is all you have, he's all you need. Let's stand together this morning. I shall not want. I'm not going to want either. Why, Brother Adam? For the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not. We're always wanting something. David said, I don't want nothing. I got Jesus. I got the shepherd. Let me just give you some things I don't want. I don't want refreshing. I don't want restoration. I don't want rest. And, 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 and it sounds bad that he's saying these things, but at the end of the day, you know why he's saying them? Because he's got the shepherd. And if you've got the shepherd, I shall not. What? What? 